leaving when Juan and myself aren't out on the road helping other miners. I've still got my own business that I got to tend to. But when separation anxiety kicks in, Juan is never more than a phone call away. Hey, buddy. Hola. Come up south. How's it going, Juan? Good, buddy. How you doing, bud? Oh, doing all right. Just uh, headed out to change a sluice box. Yeah, no, I'm here at the shop just uh, trying to get some things going. We got a, got a bunch of work. I'm trying to get this new truck done before next season, so oh, I okay. got going on it. OK. Hey, see you later, my friend. Pulling into the mine here, and uh, it's time to change his loose box. Today, Freddie collects the gold concentrate from his local mines. Hopefully, there's a lot of gold in it. I'll grab another hammer, bud. All ready. Got to hurry, because it's cold this time of year. And if you don't get them in, the carpets will freeze solid on you. Then it's a real pain in the ass. You want me to pull them up or you want to? Um, it doesn't matter. Without the flowing water, Freddie has just 20 minutes to change the mats on the 30-foot sluice runs before they freeze. We've got Cameron here. He's one hell of a guy changing sluice boxes. He's one hell of a fabricator, and he's one hell of a good guy. So Cameron started with us right out of high school. And uh, now he manages the company. When I'm gone, he takes care of pretty much everything. When I'm back, he still takes care of most of it. Yeah, exactly. After nearly four decades, Freddie has identified the secrets of maximizing gold recovery in the sluices. Well, I'm not going to get into it with you guys on pitch or water flows or any of that, right? Because there are a few things we want to keep to ourselves. But I've tried to teach the Hoffmans Everybody, efficiency. You put your boards close where you can grab them. The sluice box, keep it simple. Test your middle. See what size gold you've got. You know, are you screening to the right size for the material you have? Get your water flows where you think they need to be for your material. Test your bottom mat. See how much gold's carrying to the end. You want me to pass your mats, Fred? Sure. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Complication usually costs money. We just changed a 30-foot sluice box in, what, 15 minutes, Cam? Yeah, 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. You see a lot of guys, you know, that we've helped will go out on a little bitty sluice box that's, you know, half this wide and half this length takes them two hours to change, right? You seen how efficient this stuff came out of there? The first time we saw a Todd Hoffman sluice box, it was not a joke, but he had, you know, a 20-foot sluice box with eight foot of riffles in it. Rest of it just plates, you know, slick iron. What does slick iron do, Cameron? Uh, it doesn't catch any gold. No, nope. slick nope. plates don't catch gold. Exactly. Uh. <laughs> well, let's fire up a table. Let it warm up a few minutes here, then we'll run some gold. Back at his workshop, Freddie's ready to clean the concentrate from the mats he pulled. We've got black sand. You can see those little specks in there. That's some gold. We're going to take it from pounds and pounds of black sands and heavies down to hopefully many ounces of gold, or at least a few ounces of gold, looking at it. So let's make some gold. So as you can see here, we're separating stuff by specific gravity on the table. Uh, our gold is the heaviest element we've got on here. So pure gold has a specific gravity of 19.3. You know, the other things we have here are irons, right? We got a lot of iron on the table, which is magnetite. This probably has a specific gravity of around six. So the gold weighs per volume three times what that black sand weighs. So we're using gold's own weight against it to catch it. We use it against it in the sluice box. We use it in the jigs. We use it on the table. And that's how we're able to separate the gold from those other lighter sands that are out there. That, which I'm glad it's heavy, because if it was light, I don't know how we'd catch it. I didn't invent this style of table, but this table's my design. Mine and Rocky helped me about on it a lot. Freddie and his brother Rocky sold their table design to hundreds of miners around the world. Rocky and myself have always worked together, you know, building stuff. 
Rocky's designed a tremendous amount of plants over the years for all kinds of different things, for gold, for aggregate, you name it. I'd say it's like watching paint dry, but it never gets old watching yellow lines of gold run down a table. How's it going, Rocky? Pretty good. Running some gold. You know, some nice lines of gold, though. Yeah. Some beautiful gold. Pretty clean. Freddie and Rocky always shared the same fascination with gold. Remember that uh, gold wheel we made? <laughs> when we were kids out of a 55-gallon drum? Yep. Windshield wiper Windshield motor. Windshield motor. Yeah. <laughs> it worked, though, that little gold wheel. Now we get one out of 10 flakes. <laughs> we're both kind of the same. He left home when he was 16 years old with just his clothes in his car. And then when I was 16 years old, I left home and I just had my clothes in my car. I can build the plants, but he knows the recovery, the architecture of the ground and everything else. Of course, that's what he does. Rocky's a master at designing plants. And uh, I'm pretty dang good at catching gold. So by putting those together, we've you know, we've done great things for a lot of people around the world. Freddie's talent was on full display on a prospect in South America with the Hoffmans. Where do you want to start? Down by the water. OK, let's go. It's my first time ever panning in the ocean. Well, first time for everything, buddy. I don't know if there's a unique challenge panning in seawater or not, except Watch catching the, the water. Man of war. What the hell is that? Jellyfish. <laughs> See it? Right there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Right here? Yeah. If there's profitable gold here, this is the easiest spot we'd ever mine. And we need okay. to build a plant that we can actually get material through. I don't know what we'll build it out of, but we'll find something. You're going to build a wash plant on the beach? That's crazy. It's pretty simple. You just build something. If you need something, and there's nothing available like we did on the beach. You use what's available in the area. You know, we used wood because uh, that's what was available. We didn't have welders. We didn't have grinders. We didn't have things to cut metal with. We're trying to build a wash plant to last for 20 years. We're building a wash plant to do a good test. Get our hoses to it, start feeding material through it, and see if there's any gold on this beach. We got water. You know, it took a day to build it. Good job, Freddie. Thanks. Woo! But it proved that that wasn't a good place to mine. A buck a yard, Freddie? That's my guess. That's terrible. One of my bigger mistakes with the Hoffmans was Todd talking me into going to Diana. It was just a mess, is what I can say. Dave and myself found a spot that had gold, decent gold. Never in my life thought I'd ever see $50 a yard. And then we didn't end up going to that spot. We went to another spot that Todd had some fantasy that it was full of gold and diamonds, which ended up just being a nightmare. One thing about the jungle, it was so hot that I didn't care. I'd prospect and I'd pan in those creeks. I'd stand right chest deep in water in the creek. They're like, there's caiman in there, there's electric eels, there's snakes. And I'm like, I don't care because it feels good. It's better than standing out in 110 degree sun in 100% humidity. I'll, I'll take my chances with the caiman. They should have never been in that spot in the first place. But uh, Todd's one, he'll listen to your advice up to a point, and then he's going to do what Todd wants to do. Todd did listen to Freddie when it came to wash plants. And together with brother Rocky, he designed and built the Hoffman's four brand new plants. Well, we'd made numerous plants for a Todd. If you know the ground, you can twist things a little bit to make it better. I had spoke to Fred about what the material's like. Does the plant need a nugget trap? Can they afford the water for a nugget trap? Do they have the water to run a big sluice system like that? After talking with Fred, this and that, the design just fell together. So like Monster Red, right? It's one hell of a plant. You designed the plant. I, you know, had a lot of design in the sluices and the gold recovery system on it. I love that plant. 
but I'm tired of moving that plant. I've moved it into the Yukon, put it together, moved it around the Yukon a couple times, tore it down, moved it to Oregon, tore it down, moved it to Colorado, tore it back down to Colorado, moved it back to the Yukon. It's lucky that the bolts aren't wore out in it. It doesn't have an odometer on it, too yep. many miles. It's a flipping nice plant, but I'm flipping tired of moving. I could probably put it back together in my sleep. <laughs>